Hi, welcome back. In this tutorial I'm going to basically get you started on some of the concepts, some of the ideas that you can use to go forward in creating your photo composites. Um, this image will be uh, in your resource folder so you can uh, play with it use it um, and it's actually a really terrific image to just experiment with and uh, uh, practice some of the concepts we're going to be going over. Now in our first live session I'm going to be showing you how I created um, this uh, uh, composite called Horizon Guide and I'll be going through the steps and probably won't turn out exactly like this one because every time you do these they tend to be a little bit different but I will show you the basic concepts and steps that I took uh, to develop this piece and we'll have a lot of fun uh, doing that. But first of all, let's get started on this image. So what we're going to do is choose File, Open, and go ahead and open the uh, school chalkboard um, image uh, and just open it up. And when you open it, it's going to be on a canvas layer, and that's where we want it. We're going to be using this as our foundation image to, uh, to basically build the composite from. Now, uh, we're going to be adding lots of different things here, so um, you know most of this is going to be pretty intuitive for you. You should go into this pretty confidently because of the fact that you worked extensively with selections and with masking um, last month so you should feel pretty pretty good about this. So as we go into this um, uh, composite uh, class for our last class of um, Painter Club 2016 Part 1. Um, I think you're going to have a lot of fun with this and uh, it's again um, we spent this last six months um, really developing your skill set, skill set and getting getting you to be more confident in working with selections and masks and of course uh, with blending. Okay so let's go ahead and start by choosing the file place command and I'm going to pick up an image here this one here and it's kind of a really neat kind of a barn country scene I'm going to scale this down to about 50 percent here and select OK and just place it right about here uh, towards the center of the chalkboard. Now I will want to convert that image to a default layer so I will right click or Mac users you'll want to go to the flyout and choose um, convert to default layer. PC users can also do it that way but otherwise you can just right click on it and convert to default layer. Now with that said I'm going to activate my uh, transformation tool and what we're going to do is we're actually going to uh, distort this image uh, and I'm going to try a couple of options here. Um, I'm going to use the distort option first of all and I'm going to drag the distortion tick right up to the top of the right hand corner of the image and then I'm going to hold down my mouse key and just kind of drag that right into the corner and I'm going to do the same with the left hand corner and the lower left hand corner I'm going to drag that so it is also fits nicely in the screen and then the lower right hand corner I'm going to select that and just fit it right into that uh, chalkboard cover and then select the commit transformation option and you can see now that I got a great image right inside that chalkboard that I can uh, have some fun and play with. Okay so let's talk about some of the things we can do beyond that. Let's go ahead and again choose the next image that we're going to work with and we'll choose file and again place and I'm going to use this little girl image here and I'm going to open her up and there's really no rhyme or reason to what I'm using here so I'm going to set this to about 20% and OK 
and that's good. Now what I want to do however is I want to change the orientation of her so I'm going to uh, first of all going to convert this to a default layer then I'm going to go to uh, uh, edit and flip horizontal and so I get a little bit different uh, composition here. Now with that said, I'm again going to activate my transformation tool and holding down the shift key to constrain the proportions, I'm going to go ahead and enlarge her up just a wee bit and position her where I think it's going to work on this particular uh, image. Once I've done that, I will go ahead and commit the transformation up on the property bar. And now I'm going to work with her and we're going to actually apply a layer mask to her. So I'm going to select the layer new layer mask option which you'll find on the layers panel at the bottom. We'll go ahead and select that and I'm going to fill this layer um, actually I think I won't fill it. I'll go ahead and just create a layer mask this time and use my brush tool and I'm going to grab my brush tool and select the airbrush and we'll go up to the airbrushes workspace. I'm going to stick with that and make sure I'm going to pull my color wheel in here so you can see this. We're going to be working with black to conceal and making sure that we're on the layer mask which is the right hand side and we'll know that by the black frame going around that mask that tells us that that mask is active and what I'm going to do now is just start digging into it and removing as much as I can get out in terms of pixels here and I'm not going to be real careful with this but I, whatever whatever I need to correct I'll come back and correct now one of the things I want to do is I want to make it appear as if she's inside this composite okay so I'm going to be removing some of the pixels around the edges to make sure that she is inside that picture frame and let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit here little bit smaller brush now and I'm going to go from black to white and I'm going to reveal get some of this umbrella back and now I'll begin to uh, definitely finesse the area a little bit more here because I really want to be exacting on this and precise and then back to black as I go and remove pixels that I don't want in the scene and I want to make sure that she really feels like she's inside that frame let's go back to white now and I'm going to bring back some of the edges of her dress some of these grasses down at the bottom here and it's okay if I go over because I'm going to come back into that and correct it. And so you're going to end up finding that you're probably going to be going back and forth, you know, to make sure that you're getting exactly and getting very, very detailed as far as what we're seeing. So beautiful composites take time. They take um, a lot of uh, exacting brushwork and don't hesitate to zoom in. Uh, you'll find that you'll be much more successful as you bring imagery in if you're working 
uh, zoomed in so you can really take advantage of uh, getting your edges in and making sure that you um, have the exact detail that you're looking for. And anywhere you go over, you can just simply go from black to white or white to black to correct those areas. And here I'm going to go along her dress and take out any of that background that I don't want. And again, smaller brushes will enable you to finesse areas and get beautiful exacting uh, brushwork and imagery. Okay, I've gone a little bit further here now and you can see that I've finessed the edges, um, got her to situated into the scene where I feel that she's appropriate. Um, and now I can basically play a little bit more with her and add some, uh, some different effects. And one of the ideas that I thought uh, would be fun here is to uh, move over onto the painting side of the image now, so away from the layer mask, and use that to basically uh, you know, apply some interesting brush strokes uh, to her. And you can see that in the headdress I use the Sargent uh, WOMC brush to basically go in and uh, highlight those flowers and to give them a little more volume around her face. I also use grainy water to go in here and smudge her a bit and um, I'm probably going to go back in and do a little bit more smudging here. Um, just to soften uh, soften the lines up a, a wee bit. Um, she's very, very pale, so it, it's really tough to bring her out and give her, uh, you, know, you know, she just has very, very light skin. Um, and then, of course, uh, soften. And you can see that uh, because I have created that layer mask now, that those brush strokes remain in that masking area. So I'm, you know, I'm really free to go in here and have, uh, you know, have some fun with this and you know so remember that um, it wouldn't be painter if we couldn't do some painting in our composites as well so uh, just have fun with this and really enjoy this process um, I might even um, you know what I think I'm going to do next is move over to the um, FX or the uh, particle brushes and uh, one in particular, and I'll, I have a couple of custom particle brushes that I'll give you as well in the class, so you'll have those to, uh, to play with. And I'm just going to test a couple of these first to see if this is what, I'm, what I want. And uh, let's go with... Um, Encompass is always a nice one. I'm going to go all the way up to white here and kind of you can see that those um, you see how the um, the brush stroke remains inside that um, now one of the things I can do, however, if I wanted to go outside of the map, I could simply add a new layer and be able to you know let that go a little bit further and have a little more play with it. Um, this isn't exactly the brush I'm looking for so I may... Ambiance is another one. That's, that's kind of cool. I actually kind of like that. So I think I'm going to work with this uh, brush from the Wedding uh, Fine Chiffon and um, let me move my color sets. I'm going to go to a pure white here and I'm going to stay and remain within the mask here um, just a little bit because I want a little bit of highlight coming out in this dress. And then I'm going to take my grainy water 
and I'm just going to soften some of those edges there just a wee bit. Okay, and I'm going to want some flare coming out on the side, but we'll go ahead and do that on a new layer. And before we do that, we're going to go up to the Effects menu. We're going to choose Surface Control and apply a surface texture. And we're going to use Image Luminance. And we're going to just pop that uh, just a wee bit, about 20, no more than 20% should do it on the amount slider here and select OK and we'll go ahead and close that. So what that, what that does is it gives us a little bit more um, uh, painterly quality to the piece, a uh, little bit almost of an impasto look to the, uh, to the piece. Now we'll add a new layer. We'll go back to the uh, fine chiffon brush and let me zoom out here because I'll want to play with this and kind of see what's happening. And let's go ahead and sample this nice violet uh, color and we'll even go just a wee bit lighter on that. And I'm going to let that just kind of flow out from inside. And what we're doing here is just giving her a little bit more, a little bit more pop in that dress. I think it's just going to be pretty. And maybe a bit of white in there as well. And again, I'll pick up my uh, grainy water brush and I'll zoom in here because I want to be able to see this. just softly blend out those edges so it looks more you have just a little more continuity within the fabric and then the idea here is you certainly could let that fabric just flow out outside of the uh, um, you know right outside of the canvas right outside of the box so to speak so um, you know, this might be something you might want to do. It's kind of fun. Um, let me try another brush here as well. I think I'm going to go back to the wedding category here. And we'll do more of a directional. So this really starts to take on a real, <laughs> you know, kind of a fantasy type of uh, approach here as you kind of work outside of the realm. And again, we'll soften that so we don't have any hard edges in that area. And some of the other brushes, I mean, there's lots of beautiful blending brushes that you could use for this. Um, um, and then I'm also thinking of there might even be a I know that I have a blender in my grouping here so I'll pick that and I'll just softly just kind of throw it in there It adds a nice interest to the piece. So there you go. You start creating some really fun... Um, okay. Get back here. You start creating these really fun composites. Now I could certainly keep going on and on with this. And let's go ahead and do just one more thing uh, just for fun here. 
Um, let's go ahead and choose again the file place command and we'll go ahead and add her in one more time here on, an, on her own layer and we're actually going to put her right inside of that light bulb there. So we're going to go ahead and s hold down the constraint key and just minimize her size wise a little bit and I kind of want to be able to see uh, how she's going to look inside so I'm going to go and convert this to a default layer and then bring the opacity down a bit so I can kind of po position her where I think it might be fun. Maybe right about there. And I'll bring the opacity back up again. And this time I'm going to add a new layer and this time we're going to fill that layer with black so you'll want to select black as your color and go to um, edit and fill and we'll fill that entire um, image with black do make sure that your opacity is all the way to hundred percent when you do that and select OK now you'll notice that I have some bit of um, imagery going off on the side from the original image and I'm going to go back to my airbrushes and the digital airbrush and we'll set this bring the size up and working with uh, black I want that gone so I'm going to remove that <coughs> and all I want to do now is bring her into that light bulb so I'm going to go back up to white and very softly start pulling her in. Very soft pressure here. I really want to maintain the look of uh, opacity of the light bulb. And then I can go back to black just to bring it back a little bit, just so it's just subtle. Okay, so we end up with something like that. So that's kind of fun. Now in the last video, I'm going to show you what I ended up doing to complete this image and uh, then you can get started on yours. Okay, talk to you soon.